Amen. Will you pray with me, beloved, as I take a moment to minister from the topic, I am free. Gracious and loving Lord, how grateful we are. Jesus is the one that sets us free. And so in his name, we come, oh God, to be reminded that we are free indeed. Amen. There's an old gospel song by Reverend Milton Brunson that has been replaying in my spirit and my head for the past few days. Pretty much it's been what has inspired my sermon for today. And the lyrics simply say, I'm free, praise the Lord, I'm free. No longer bound, no more chains holding me. My soul is resting, it's just a blessing. Praise the Lord, hallelujah, I'm free. Hallelujah, indeed, I'm free and you're free. To be free is a need and a longing, I believe, I hope, and pray that most, if not all, people desire. For to be bound, stuck, held back, or held hostage in one's mind, one's body, one's spirit, one's soul is challenging, to say the least. And although its meaning and its need may vary from person to person and situation to situation, the fact that people long to be free and long to have freedom cannot be denied. Nor can the fact that those bound, stuck, held hostage and held back are deeply and negatively impacted by their situation, whether they are aware of it or not. Look with me at Jesus's home folk town. In our gospel lesson today, it's been some time since they have seen him. In fact, Jesus has been a busy rabbi, if you might know. Just go to the earlier chapters of Mark, and you'll see that he's been a busy rabbi that's been healing and teaching and preaching, been giving new life to those that have been dead. It's been a time of a time that he's been away, and needless to say, he has done some really awesome things while he's been away from them. And here he comes home with his disciples, so to share what he has to offer with them, the life and the opportunity to be free. For Jesus is clear about what his mission is, and although Mark does not share this detail, we find in Luke 4, 16 to 30, these words, another view of what happened that day. You see, Jesus stood up and read with power and authority and prophetically from that sweet passage in Isaiah 61, 1 to 2. He simply said, the spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has set me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight to the blind, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Then, without missing a beat, he hands the scroll back. He sits down and says, today, the scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. And mm, these powerful words, all oh, for the hometown folks, they were responded in such amazing ways. Some of them were struck, some of them were trapped, some of them were bounded by because of what they heard. Clearly, they weren't listening to what Jesus said, you see, because they got caught up in who was speaking and not what was being said or what was being offered. These powerful words lifted from our Lord and Savior, they thought he was crazy. They couldn't understand how Jesus was bold enough to declare some of the greatest news of provision and freedom and healing and justice to all. Mm to give the greatest gift to those that were bounded and in need. And all they could think about with their bounded minds and hearts. And I say bounded minds and hearts because I think they were bounded by the ills of their cultural context. They were warped by the religious practices and the unjust societal structures because they just couldn't see beyond their chains of what was locking their mind because they were stuck and they rejected the hope and the freedom that Jesus was bringing them. Listen to their chains of rejection and their oppression as they really questioned Jesus amongst themselves. They said, 
Is this not the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James and Jose and Judas and Simon? And aren't those their sisters here with us? Hmm. In their own way, you may not know what the insult was, but in essence, they were saying, look, how can this be the one whom the Lord has come to be anointed and set free if he was actually just a carpenter that grew up in our community? Or the fact that we know that by our standards, it's the father who gives you a legacy, but we're going to call him the son of Mary instead of the son of Joseph, or better yet, the son of God. And you know what? He can't be better than us because he's sitting here right now with his earthly brothers and sisters. So you know what? He's just like us. He can't be the anointed one. How bounded they were. My Lord, my Lord. It's amazing how people think they know what they know. How often have we, if we're honest, had been like those hometown folks, you know, limiting folks, binding persons to our way of thinking, rejecting the essence of who they are today because of what we knew of them way back then or how we thought we hung out with them and knew them. Oh, how? Like some of us today, when presented with new wisdom and new opportunities and new way of living and having life, stay bounded and locked in the status quo that the world's way of looking at life and liberty, no matter how oppressive or demeaning it may be for some, because of the good news being offered is just so strange that we can't wrap our minds around it. Instead of letting freedom ring by embracing the new, exchanging our view for a better view of things and taking the steps to change our behavior, truly choosing freedom and being free. We instead choose to stay chained to what we know and reject what is right before us. And it would be sad, a little bit, and some bad news if this was the case for just a few. Yet, Lord God Almighty, rejecting freedom seems to be the surmounting these days. For too long, too many have need of life, provision, freedom, healing, and justice. Yet to this day, I find myself asking over and over again, when? When, O oh Lord, will we see all the chains of white supremacy and all ignorant persons who keep rejecting the fact that generations of black and brown folks have helped to make America great break? And when, oh God, when the societal structures that reject and deny the rights of so many ignorance crumble so that all can be fed and educated? When, oh Lord, when those who are wrongly jailed be free so that those who are prospering from their plight be held accountable, my God. And when, sweet Jesus, when the old thoughts that reject medicine and vaccines and masks change so that all can see and live another day. And in the words of that young woman, Amanda Brary, I ask, when will any norm any notion of what just is, isn't justice cease. So that the rights of those uplifted in the Declaration of Independence is truly for all, because you know the day that it written, it didn't include some of us. In fact, that's why we have Juneteenth, because on the day that the Declaration of Independence was written, Thomas Jefferson, who beautifully crafted, had at least 603 slaves still by then. My Lord, my Lord, but the truth of those words are still the rights of all God's people. When all who are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights be fully able to claim their right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. For far too long, mindsets have been locked on foolish beliefs. And behaviors have been withheld the good things of those who need and deserve them. And the closed hearts have rejected the possibility of a new and greater way for all. So on this day that the Lord has made, a day when we celebrate the independence and celebrate our freedom, let us not reject like the hometown folk back in Nazareth or the ills of society in the times to the truth of what Jesus still offers us today. 
He is the anointed one who still comes to proclaim good news to the poor, to proclaim freedom to the prisoners, recovery of sight to the blind, and to set the oppressed free and proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And if you believe he frees us and frees you, we are free indeed. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I'm free. And thankfully, and I do mean thankfully, Jesus did not let the rejection of those who thought they knew him stop him from his mission. He was clear that his mission was to free God's people and to save God's people. And so thankfully, he took those that fully believed that Jesus had the ability to do so. He kept doing so. Thankfully, there were those like his disciples that said, well, you know, Jesus said this and we believe him. And not only do we believe him, we can actually go and do like he did. And thankfully, the disciples actually was able enough to witness how even though some rejected Jesus in that moment, there still were a few that heard the words of life and decided that they would live. And I say thankfully, and you may be wondering why, because you know what? Since Jesus did not let them, their rejection of him stop him from his purpose, because he knew that a prophet was without honor in their own home. He knew a deeper truth. And I wonder how many of you know this truth. Sometimes to the world and those outside of our home and community, they are amazed and they respect us because of all the great things we do. But then when we come home, Somehow, some way, they forget or they want to not honor us. I say that for some, this should not matter. And I pray for you, you begin to understand who you are and not let it matter to you. Because once you know who you are, you are free to walk and be. And you can be just like our Redeemer who hears the rejection but does not let it keep them stuck or bounded, but do the work that you've been called to do. I pray that you take this moment to hear that one valuable lesson for you this day. As we follow our Master, our Savior. You see, there is a point in our life and our maturity and our faith that we can actually be free of the opinions of others. There's an opportunity when we can actually not worry about what they are saying or what their view of us is and don't let it shape us, especially if it's a lie. Now, I'm not saying that if people try to help you help yourself and help you grow up and mature in the spirit and life of faith, that you don't ignore that wisdom. But I am saying that when the world is trying to reject who you are and bound you by their way, and you know in the depths of your soul that the Lord has freed you indeed, that you will go forward boldly. And just in case you are afraid to go, I want to remind you who you are. According to Jesus Christ, he says that you are the head and not the tail. According to Jesus Christ, he says that you have the ability to do exceedingly above all you could ask, think, or imagine, just like your God, that you will do greater works that he has made you fearfully and wonderfully made, and you, by his stripes, are free. So don't let the public tear you down and don't let their wrongful assumptions bind you. Be free as God has made you to be because we are free. And this is important because for all those who claim to be Jesus Christ, especially those brown and black sweethearts in this America, by grace, you understand no matter how long the systems have held you back, that I pray by grace you understand that the freedom that God gives you is still yours. 
I also say thankfully that the few who believed Jesus was the ability, had the ability to heal and free by his touch. I am grateful that despite what the majority of his opinion was that day, they chose to believe him. They chose that they wanted to be whole. I wonder if it had something to do with their brokenness. I wonder if it had to do with the fact that they needed hope and needed life. I wonder if because their need was so great to be healed and whole and free that they were determined to get their healing no matter what the test. The powerful truth in this is that we can all learn on how to hold on in times of distress and hardships and illness and troubles. In times like this, when you are looking for your hope and looking to be free from that which binds you, the words of Paul in his epistle so sweetly says, my grace is sufficient for you. For power is made perfect in your weakness. For whenever you are weak, hallelujah, Jesus is strong. And the power that Paul is speaking of is not just some unknown power. It's the Holy Spirit boldness power. It's that resurrection power that can bring life out of anything and give new life forever by God's grace. We say thank you. So if you happen to be broken, and if you need to know that right now in these times, life is hard and you need to also hold on to the grace that God gives you and understand that when you are weak, you can be free and rest in his power and his love because he will be your strength. Mm. I say that because I know and I understand. And I think they knew and understand and I think anyone who's broken understands that Jesus is always the perfect healer. Is there someone weak this day? I encourage you, I encourage you, I encourage you who's feeling broken this day. I beseech you, invite you to please come to Jesus and let him make you whole. I know this was a hard truth, but it's still the truth. And if you're willing to claim this truth, I promise you, it will set you free. If not just your body, your mind and your spirit. And thankfully, oh, thankfully, the disciples who had firsthand experience of what Jesus could do were bold enough to believe that they should follow and obey. For as the scripture continues, Jesus freely goes into the villages and teaches and he sends his disciples out to expand his work of healing and freedom in the world, ensuring and encouraging them to make sure that all who are bounded are set free. He gave them authority. Mm. He sent them two by two. And he told them not to take a blessed thing other than what they already had. Mm. I said that again. He gave them authority. He sent them two by two and then told them not to take another blessed thing. Mm. I wonder why they went. I wonder why they would go. Could it be that they knew something that none others had firsthand experience knowing? Could it be that they had spent since his baptism and their calling? He had, they had firsthand watched and witnessed the healing miracles that Jesus did. He watched demons flee. Mm -hmm. He watched leper skin be made clean. He watched paralyzed people find their legs to start walking. And he watched the dead come back to life. Could it be they saw that and knew something was amazingly possible? 
Could it be that they learned the master's feet and learned the kingdom lessons about what it means to be wise and how to rebuke the sea and the wind and how to worship the Lord in spirit and truth? Could they be, could it be that they understood the true meaning of what Sabbath was? And it was not about rituals, but it was about worshiping and serving the Lord in spirit and the truth. Could it be that all these experiences experiences when they added up gave them a confidence to believe if Jesus gave them the authority to do it they could hmm 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 do you child of God do you disciple of Jesus Christ have you seen the Lord do miracles in your life? Hmm. Have you, in the time that God has allowed you to walk this journey, and have you learned the lessons of faith that Jesus has taught you? And have you, by any kind of crazy circumstance, understand that sometimes life throws something at you, but Jesus has something better? Have you? And if you have, do you realize that that same grace, the same power, and the same spirit, the same authority of Jesus rests on you just like it rested on them way back then? And if that power, and if you believe that power is working in you, then you can freely move in this world and do the same. And moving in this world and doing the same is not doing the same thing you want to do. No, no, no. It's about the greater mission of Jesus Christ, which is to go unbinding, proclaiming, healing, and overcoming evil. It's about working with others, not by yourself. And it's about taking what you have and trusting that the Lord that sees what you have can multiply it and use it and provide that which you don't have so that you can go into the world and free a community. They went without missing a beat. And then they came back jumping and testifying about all the good things that God allowed them to do in the way. But Jesus gave them one more piece of information to help them free themselves. They said, if you come to some place, and these are my words translated, and those that you come to bring this life, these words of freedom and restoration and redemption, if you come to them and they don't receive it, I wish you could see my feet, but just shake it off and keep stepping. Hmm. That might free a couple of us. You see, for the Jewish community way back then, they had this custom that when they went in Gentile territory, before they stepped into theirs, they would shake one foot and take a step over the right line into the promised land and then shake the other foot and step so that they would leave and separate that which didn't belong to them and kept them holy. For some of us, but better yet, let me go back to them. When Jesus told them to do that to the community that they went to reach, because no, they were going to disciples. So if any disciple or Jewish person saw them shaking their feet, they understood, they understood what it meant that they were being separated. And when they went with this message of freedom and hope for those that refuse it, they were supposed to leave them because not only were they rejecting the disciple, they were rejecting the Messiah who sent them. In this day, beloved, as we go forward into the world, as we're called to claim freedom to the oppressed and sight to the blind and overcome all kinds of evil, I believe in all my heart that some of us, some of us have to learn to shake and step. Because everywhere we go doesn't want to be whole. But there are many more places that too. And so my prayer this day, as we gather, I want you to be clear that 
It's your choice whether you will be free or bound. And by that I mean, you may not be able to dictate every circumstance that happens in your life, but you can choose whether or not you're gonna believe Jesus or reject him. You can also choose that if you happen to be free, that you can join in the work to help others be free because you know in these United States of America, as great as they wanna say, there are still too many bound and too many, too many, too many. Too many are not free and not by their choice, but by the systems and the mindsets and the injustices of our world. So as long as those things exist, there are those of us who are ready, clear that we're free. We're, go to, we're called to free those folks. And if you happen to be one of the bounded, hold on, one of us who is free indeed are gonna come and help free you, I hope. I say I hope. The only reason why I say I hope is all we who are free indeed have to do is to walk in the anointing and the power and the grace that God gives us. Hmm. I believe. I believe the Lord wants all free. That's why he gave his life. And I believe that he's given us the power to help bring the kingdom and to free so many. But I believe also that when we can't see what he sees, and when we stay bound and locked by the chains that cause us fear and hurt and harm, we become afraid to be free. So this day, since it's Independence Day, I thought I'd invite you to do something. I thought I'd invite you to take on a new testimony, take on a new way of being. I thought I'd invite you to do what Jesus says and know that the authority and anointing of Jesus is on your life and you have the right to be free and to free others. And if you will join me, we can be free. Will you join me and be free? Mm. I can't hear you online, but I hope you said yes. And if you are, you can sing those words in testimony. I am free. Praise the Lord, I'm free. No longer bound, no more chains holding me. My soul is resting. It's such a blessing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm free. Amen. Amen.